Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you <laughs> with a cash offer on the table today. 280, I'm done. You're done at 280? That's a no. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say reject that offer and gamble and go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Now, today, the show comes to you from Bristol City Football Ground. <laughs> they like their football in these parts. So what are they going to do? Are they going to take cash on the table today or are they going to gamble and go to auction? Either way, they want to walk away with the real deal. For our first deal of the day, we're over to Mark Stevens' table, where Sarah Gilbert's hoping is in with a fighting chance of walking away with good money. Well, Gilbert, you bought me a lovely sword here. I really want to know as much about it as you can possibly tell me. I was giving it in 1959. I was working in Newcastle in a building for a building company, and I was doing some alterations to a house, and they were going to chuck this out on the tip. And when I took it home, my wife said, no, we're not having that, it's too old and dirty. You see? <laughs> so I've just kept it in my garage, well, and that's as much as I know about it. Well, well, hopefully I can give you a bit more information on it today. I personally think it's either French or Italian. It's not a military sword. I believe it's a court sword that would have been worn by a gentleman at the courts. Very nicely made. This is obviously wood. Well, I w I'm a joiner and I wouldn't yeah. want to clean it up. I thought, no, I won't touch it in case I damage it. No, and, that, and believe me, that is always the best action to take. But because this is original and it hasn't been touched, it's got that lovely look to it. I mean, this is... All the scales here have been hand-carved, all in wood, and it's obviously a dolphin of some description. The blade is an early blade. I mean, I would say between 1760 and 1790 but it is an unusual thing it's something that i like it's got something about it there's a lot of people yeah. like it i'm going to put some money on the table and let's see if we can have a deal 20 40 60 80 100 120 140 160 180 200 £220, Gilbert. How does that sound to you? Brilliant. Well, before you make a decision, I would like David to come in and give you some advice. Oh, yes. I heard you say, how does that sound? It sounds pretty good. And I also think it sounds pretty good. I think it's good. Our independent value as an auctioneer, they've estimated this at 80 to 120. I think Mark's offer is generous. Yes, it is. And though. I would say, without hesitation, accept that offer but i still believe our independent valuers they were a little bit low on their valuation that is a good lot yes i would accept that we got a deal you've got a deal thank you very much indeed it's a pleasure okay hard cash cold steel great deal off to see Simon Schneider now, where it looks like Carol's Coming emptied the contents of her jewellery box. Carol. Hello, Carol. Have oh, you bought another little section of watches and rings and bits of jewellery? Yeah. Why have you bought this in today? Um, it was it was my mum's uh, and my grandma's, and I just wanted to bring it in to find out a bit more about it and just really to see what what it's worth. Is there anything there that you would wear, is it? I don't you, think so. It's not, not my not your type sort of, of thing, really. Seems like nowadays sort of silver jewellery is more popular, no, isn't it? And sort of more modern looking things. Which is a shame because, if, if, for example, you look at this little brooch here, yeah. which is probably the oldest thing on the table. There's this very pretty little bar brooch. It's, I suppose it's just a bit old fashioned nowadays. People don't really wear them. This piece is 15 karat gold, okay. and when they made jewellery in 15 karat, it was always a sign of good quality. So that means it's worth a bit more for its weight in gold as well. The rings are all pretty modern, and then the watches, that's um, a 9 karat gold bracelet with metal springs inside it, and a 9 karat gold watch. Right, I guess you'd like some money. Yes, please. 
had a sort of look at it all and sort of estimated the weights of the gold and everything. And I think a fair offer for what's in front of me, I'm going to give you a price for all of it, is that okay? Yeah. Would be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds. I think I'd like a bit more than that, please. A bit more, please. Oh, more, you said that please. very nicely. You sound like <laughs> the little boy in Oliver. More, please. 180 pounds. No, that's not enough. Not enough. No. You've got an idea of what you want, obviously. Yeah, it's a wee bit so, more than that, is yeah. it? Um, the price of gold has come down a little bit recently, and it seems to be on a bit of a downward spiral, so... You would say that. <laughs> well, it's true, actually. You know, it's been going up and up mm. for ages, and it's the first time it's come down a wee bit. But when I go another 20 quid, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two hundred 200 pounds. Let's see what David thinks about my offer. Well, there's a mixed parcel here. There's about 250 pounds worth of scrap. The offer on the table is realistic, but it could do with a little bit more. I'm going to leave you with Simon. He's a good man, and I'm sure he will put something else on the table. OK. Right, well, basically, i better put something else on the okay. table. <laughs> what I'm going to do, Carl, I'm going to put down another £20, okay. and I'm going to make it a final offer of £220 cash. Yes, I'd like to accept that offer. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in today, and thanks, thanks for bringing in your jewellery. Thank you. Now Lawrence has brought in something for Corrie Jeffrey which has made a big impression. Wow. I've got to start by saying, wow. How did you come by this? I was just strolling through the town and I called into a charity shop and this was just basically being put in the counter as I was walking in. I seen the bright colours which attracted me to it straight away. So I went over and had a closer look and bought it. Let's have a look at it. It's this beautiful, beautiful royal blue glass. I'm going to open it, and you can see the colour of the glass inside. But what's so wonderful is the glass has been enamelled. So you've had a glaze applied and high fired to give it this almost jewel-like set of colours. And you've got two exotic birds and blossoms. And it's been set in these metal mounts, so you've got little gilded metal feet. I mean, they're not bronze, they're just gilt metal. Okay. And a little lock. And at the side here, you've got two bobbles, and they've got little holes in them. I don't know if you can see. Yes. And there would have been a handle that went from one side to the other. And obviously, over the years, it's got lost. Now, personally, I think this is probably Austrian. I think it was made between 1850 and 1900. And I think it's charming, absolutely lovely. So why are you parting with it? Because me and my wife are going to Australia in February and we're going to use this or some money off it to help towards the fairs. So let's get started. 50. 100. 50. 200. I'm watching you closely. I'm watching the eyes and the hand. <laughs> 250 on the table. OK. OK, he says. So cool. No, I think it's worth more than that. So we got 300, 350, 400, 20, 40, 60, 80. And I'm afraid that the loss of handles, a bit of rubbing and the, and the quality of the mount is making me feel that's a good offer. I think everything you said sums up what my feelings are too. I love the Bohemia glass. I think the decoration is superb. I think the metalwork makes it a more ordinary casket. I'm going to say the offer on the table is not a bad offer. It could do better with a good win behind it in the right auction on the right day. But I can't guarantee you that's going to happen, so it's your call. Lawrence, we've got 480 on the table. 
So I'm going to put another 20 down, which is 500, which means you'd have to get 600 at auction. So can you not add any more to that? So if I put another, that's be 520 on the table. And that really is, I'm at the end now, so you're 520. I wanted more. I think I can get more. I think I'm going to take it to auction and take the gamble. Lawrence, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much. And I have to ask you the crucial question. How much did you pay for it? Uh, £100. I think you did really well. It's a fabulous Thank thing. You. I would have loved to have bought that casket. It's so pretty, so me, so lovely. I just couldn't see the money in it. But I am sad not to be going home with it. Well, Never mind, Corrie, you offered up a fair amount. Let's hope the gamble pays off for Lawrence. Were you impressed with that or not impressed with the 520? Uh, I was impressed, but I just decided to take the gamble and bring it to auction. You know, I think you did the right thing. Now, it's here in the sale room with a six to eight hundred pound estimate. It's worth every penny of that, and there's a reserve of six hundred pounds. It's here now. Let's see if there is a buyer. It's worth the six to eight hundred pounds without any question. We're ready on the phone. Thank you. What should we say? There's a telephone bidder just coming on the telephone. That's always a good sign. Four hundred. Looking for four twenty now. Four twenty. Four fifty on the internet. Four eighty. At four eighty. Five hundred on the internet. 550? 550 on the phone. 550 on the telephone. It's already more than Corrie Jeffries offered, but it's not enough because 600 is the reserve. 580. At 580. 600, you're out. 590. At 590 against you, then you're on the internet. One more, you're going to go 600. At 590, 600 now on the internet. 600 pounds, it's made its reserve. At 600 now on the internet. We all finished then at 600. Congratulations. We have to take away the commission. We're down to 510 pounds. Come on, what's your Never thoughts? Never mind. It's just a gamble. It's isn't a gamble, it? isn't it? It's a gamble, of course. One thing you know for sure, it made 600 pounds here. I still believe that was worth more money. But on the day, you take your gamble, you take your chances, and the real deal was £520. Corrie, you were on the money, girl. After the break, these two ladies have high hopes for their unusual item. So, ladies, what are you going to do with the vast fortune that you're going to earn out of this extraordinary non-pen? Well, we're thinking about a cruise, you know, at first, but obviously... But what in heaven's name is it? Well, we're not actually quite sure if... Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal, where the dealer's den is a hive of activity. We're joining Michael Hogburn now, where he's battling against two sisters. So you bought in a nice platinum brooch, and why are you selling it and where's it from? Um, it was given to us by our nan last year, and she inherited it from an auntie back in the early 1980s. Right. I've worn it once. I was Anna's bridesmaid, and I've worn it on my dress as a bridesmaid's yeah. uh, pin. Uh, so I feel that I've worn it, and it's safe to pass on. Oh, good on you. Mm. The thing about this sort of jewellery is, like you say, it's special occasion stuff, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, inside here, we don't really have to look very hard to see this, but I'm sure you know, this one's a sapphire. And then we've got a little diamond chips all the way around it, really, and it's got a nice little sparkle to it, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's just... Uh, they're all nice little diamonds in there. They're very small. Chips, we call them in the trade. And we believe this to be platinum set, don't we, rather than 18 karat white, because they can be 18 karat white gold. Yeah. So, yeah, OK, I'm happy. I'm going to go £50, 100 150 £200, 210 20 to 30. Yeah. No, abs abs that was almost one yes and one no. No, it's no, no, that's a definite Honestly, no. it's an absolute no. 240, 250. 260, 270, 280. I'm done. 280, I'm done. You're done at 280? Yeah. That's a no. No, thank sure. you. All right. No, all thank right. you. 290. <laughs> 300. I can't stretch any further. Look. If that's what you're offering, we want to go to auction. 300. Let's do a deal, girls. 150 each. 320, final offer. No. no. 
No. Auction it is then. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Yes, yeah. sure. Auction. Thank you. Sure? you. Thank yeah. you. Well, I wish you luck. I did okay. have a go at it. You did. <laughs> Three twenty was a strong bid on that. It's a nice item, but at three twenty, by the time you go to the auction and you put a twenty percent buyer's premium on top of that, you're looking at a four hundred pound bid really to get that sort of money. I think they might have gone over the top on that. Well, Michael, let's hope for their sake well, you're wrong. Over to the Duke to see if he can do any better in the sale room. Back to you at the back at eighteen. It's coming up on a 350 to 450 estimation. Fingers crossed. What was Nan called? Uh, Joyce. OK. Joyce was Nan. She left this lovely item to Lucy and Anna. We're hoping to get it away here today. Are we going to do it, girls? Yes. <laughs> Lots of interest here on the book. Must start the bidding at uh, 200, 220, 240, 260. At 260 now. At 260, 280, 300, 320. 340 at 340. We're all done then at 340. At 340. Last chance then at 340. The gavel has just gone down at 340 pounds. Are you happy about that? Take away the commission. It's going to leave you about 280. Yeah, we're happy, aren't we? Happy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Both the girls are happy. Grand's brooches sold for a little bit less, but on the day. It was that cheeky cockney character, Michael Hogman. <laughs> you, Michael, gave the real deal at 320 quid. We should have grabbed his money while we, we had the chance. Yeah. That was the real deal. Back to the dealer's den now, where Corrie's been brought in a mystery item. What on earth have you brought? Well, we're not actually quite sure. If... We just um, decided to empty the garage out and... Um... We came across that and decided to bring it down and hopefully somebody can tell us more about hopefully it. Hopefully you can give us a bit more of an idea as to what it okay, is. Well, let's have a look at it. It's a pen. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That's what we It's a dip first pen. Thought. Yeah, it's a dip pen and it's of, um, like an early Bakelite plastic, an early plastic, an early man-made. OK, and uh, unscrew it. It's not a pen. No, we first thought it was a pen. And in fact, this pulls out and it's written here, Salter England. Salters were people who made scales. And you held it up and this clipped onto something somehow. So whether it held paper, it can't yeah, have been anything too heavy. When do you think they would um, be using those? You know? It looks to me 1930s, 1940s. So, ladies, what are you going to do with the vast fortune that you're going to earn out of this extraordinary non-pen? I was thinking about a cruise, you know, at first, <laughs> but obviously not that much. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. maybe just a nice pub lunch and um, a couple of drinks. Right, ladies, let's put some money on the table. Are we both negotiating or am I talking to one? Negotiating, I think. We're both yeah. negotiating, mm. right. I'm going to put 20 on the table and see how you feel. Depends where you want to go for lunch. Mm. Two for ten at that rate. <laughs> and maybe if you put a, maybe another note on there, you might be able to stretch to get a drink out of it as well. Well, I'm going to put 25. Another fiver there, but I think 25 is, is what I'm going to offer. How would you feel about that? That's not too bad, Charlotte. Yeah, I see. So we so. have a deal at we 25 have a deal. pounds? Yeah. Thank Shake you. on it. Thank you very much. <laughs> And who says there's no such thing as a free lunch, eh? Over to Mark, where Kathy's brought in a lovely music box. David and Auctioneer Liz Poole are having a look in too, which could mean some big money changing hands. Well, you've brought me in a lovely box here, which when we open, we find out it's a music box. What can you tell me about it? I believe it's about 1870. Yep. And it's the smallest of, I've got three. And I bought them from a person uh, that uh, restored them. Right. Or had them restored, actually, yeah. So they're all in full working order? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. OK, so what yes. we're going to do, we're just going to pour the ratchet out here. And this is the actual winding mechanism, as I'm sure you well know. Yes. And uh, maybe one more just to see. Yes. OK, let's do that. And I think it's good to give it a little spin. Yeah. See what it sounds like. So let's move this across, just let me get up here. 
and we pull this down here? Yes. There we go. Let's have a listen to this wonderful sound. You may have to open the lid to hear Should it. That's better, isn't it? That's lovely. And in lovely condition inside. Yes. So we just pull that back and that should stop it. Yes. That's a lovely tune, isn't it? It's very distinctive, lovely. Yes. Very, very nice indeed. Now, Liz, what's your feelings about this? Come on. I agree with you totally that it's a lovely little box, but quite small, only for a not 20 airs. I've gone at two to 400. Well, Liz is being, like a lot of auctioneers, a bit careful. She's saying two to 400. I'm saying you could not get that restored for two to 400 pounds. Now, our dealer, Mark, he's right on the money, usually. I have a feeling he will really value this. So let's see what Mark puts on the table. I suppose we really come to the point where I, I need to put some money on the table for you, don't I? Yes, I think you do. <laughs> this is always the best part, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go into my pocket and see yes. what we got. So, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds, 250 pounds, 300 pounds, 350 pounds. No. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Four hundred pounds. How does that sound to you? Sorry, it's not enough. Not enough. No. Four hundred and fifty pounds. No. Four hundred and fifty pounds. I'm going to get in there and tell our seller we're almost there. So you're not happy with the four fifty on the table? No, sorry, I'm not. No. No, no sorry. Well, here's the boss now. OK. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about this music box. Now, the independent valuation is five to seven. The auctioneer says, no, I don't see this at anything like that, two to four hundred pounds. I think what we have there is an item ready, presentable for the public. And if we could get five hundred pounds, I think you'd be better off than going to auction. I don't think you would get £500 after the deduction of commission at auction. I am prepared to put the other 50 down to make it the 500. Well, listening to what Dave has had to say, I think I will accept it. You sure? Are you, are you yes. happy with that? Yes, I will accept that. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Much, Mark. Thank you. Coming up. David's oh, working overtime in the sale room. So we need to sell this coffee set. But will his hard work pay off? <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's a lovely sunny day here in Bristol, the home of Bristol Blue Glass, which has been made in this cultural city since the 18th century. The Duke's joined by Dr Francis Burroughs, the owner of Bristol Blue Glass South West. He's brought in some attractive pieces. You've obviously been a fan for many years of English glass. I, yes, I, I love English glass, not just Bristol Blue. Now, we all know the name Bristol Blue Glass. What we want to know is, how is this blue glass created? It is created out of lead crystal and it is coloured with cobalt, and that is the magic substance which gives it this wonderful, intense blue colour. You brought along some extraordinary items. Take us through, first of all, the, the earliest item you have here. The earliest item here is a little sweetmeat dish of about 1730. This is probably the earliest piece of cobalt Bristol blue glass that you're ever likely to handle. OK, let's have a look at these two decanters here. We have on this one Hollands, a type of gin. And on this one, of course, we have rum. Where do those date? Around the latter part of the 18th century, up to about 1800? Yes, something like that. 1780 to 1800. This Hollands one is actually um, signed by Isaac Jacobs, one of the most famous of the Bristol glass makers. So that probably dates from about 1803, 1805, very late in the fashion for Bristol okay. blue glass. Now, this is eye-popping, isn't it? It's just fabulous, it's perfect. We have these three Bristol blue decanters in a silver stand, a holding stand. 
um, around the neck here, uh, vines uh, and, uh, and grapes. Is that one of your favourite pieces? It is a piece that I'm very fond of and I was very lucky to be able to uh, buy this a few years ago. It is actually made by Henry Wilkinson, who is one of the great figures of the early 19th century, very great silversmith and Sheffield plate maker, who actually worked in Sheffield. You'll see that the blue colour is slightly light. At the time this was made, because of the Napoleonic Wars, it was very difficult to import cobalt from Germany into this country. Oh, interesting. Now, bringing you up to the present time, you are still, as we speak, producing Bristol Blue Glass. We are. We fortunately have a, a worldwide market okay. for it. Two items here. This one, first of all, very classical shaped um, decanter or ewer. Uh, how do you describe that we for sale today? We what call it our claret chug. That also has caught my eye. Now, that is a... Uh, one of your items you're producing today. Yes. What do you call that? We call that the Lady Vase. As you see, it is, has been engraved and then gilded with silver. Now, people at home will be thinking, I fancy going along there. I'd love to see the creation of this marvellous glass. Is it safe for young children to be brought along with families in an environment where you're blowing glass? Yes, we do welcome children. Uh, and we welcome adults if they're accompanied by a responsible child. Sounds like a great day out. Now, it's getting to that time in the afternoon where we could all do with a little pick-me-up. Can Edward help? So, Edward, you have brought in a little coffee set. I have. What can you tell me about this coffee set? <clears throat> when we were clearing out my mother-in-law's uh, bungalow, it was in the uh, cupboard. Right. And We'd never seen it before. Never seen it before? Not no. something you wanted to use yourself? No. I suppose it's sort of slightly unfashionable now. Not many people probably sit down and, and sort of use their best crockery, as it were. But this is quite a nice design, really. I guess it's from the 1950s. It looks like the 50s. It is. And it's Norwegian company, is it not? It is, yeah. It's quite stylish. A bit on the plain side for me, but... That sort of decoration is typical sort of 1950s or early 60s look, which is quite sort of popular coming into sort of fashion again at the moment. What would you do with the money? Uh, that is when you've got any money for it. It would go towards our holiday fund. Right. Well, I'm going to make you an offer for your tea set today. I have to say, it's not something that I can see a great deal of value in. Um, and I can't really think who I'd sell it to, which is why I'm a bit reluctant, but I would pay. £25 for it. I was, I was hoping for quite, quite a bit more, really. Yes, I just can't see it myself, Edward. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put down another fiver and I'll go to £30. Yeah, no, I, um, I think I'd like to probably send it to auction. I wish you all the best with it. Thank you for bringing it in. I'm sorry I can't be That's more help, Edward. Good luck with your tea set in auction and thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you very much. There's a reason why you're selling a few things, and that is you are going to take your grandchild or grandchildren on holiday to Florida. Yes. OK. Fantastic holiday. You know where they're going to. It's a commercial name. I won't mention it on television, but nevertheless, you're going to have a fantastic time. So we need to sell this coffee set. Let's see what it brings. Here we are. There we are, showing on the stage. 1960s, very stylish coffee set. Lots of interest, must start the bidding at. 15, 18, 20 bid at 20, 22, 25, 28, 30 with the lady. At 30, at 30, we're just waiting for the internet at 30. 35, no, 35 online, selling at 35. 35 pounds under the gavel, a last minute offering from the internet. We have some commission to take away, which is always a bit painful, but it's about 30 quid. What's the grandchildren's name? Ryan. Ryan. Ryan? Ryan. Ryan, going with Grandad to Florida. What a trip. What a lucky boy. That is the real deal. After the break, the temperature's <laughs> rising at Mark's table. <laughs> oh, a hot flush. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> There's a, oh, thank you, David. Oh, I OK. But can he stand the heat? 
Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. For the final deal of the day, we're with Mark, where it's in for a penny, in for a pound. That's my daughter. Yeah. I'm Dolores. I'm Mum. OK. Very nice, too. Right. So you've come along today, you bought me a lovely lot of coins. Yes. Any history on them? How did you obtain them? They belong to um, my stepdad, David, right. and sadly he passed away eight years ago and it was very sudden, very unexpected, mm -hmm. and uh, it took quite a long time really to come to terms with it. But um, we're eight years on now and I, I think it's time to, um, to just probably put things in order and start to, to start to move on, to be honest, Mark. He sounds a bit like my father. I mean, he, I mean, he loves coins. I love coins. Yeah. And I think what we do, we start with the ten in the box here. Okay. Now, what we have is a variation of different monarchs on the dates of these sovereigns. We start with the earliest one, which is George III, which is this one here. Then we move on to George IV, mm -hmm. then to William IV, Queen Victoria, Edward VII, George V, and our present Queen now, Queen Elizabeth II. So this collection of gold sovereigns in here is showing the monarchs we've had since George III right up to our present time. Now, these two in the boxes are proof sovereigns. The technical term for these is FDC, which is fleur de coin, which means these have been minted, been picked up, by a person wearing gloves and sealed in the plastic cases. They've never been touched by human hands. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Directly they're touched, we have to take away their title, which is FDC. Mm -hmm. But there's one nice thing about these coins. There's one of them that's probably one of the rarest ones. That's right. Okay. And it's that one. This coin here. Yes. <laughs> yes. So this coin is a proof sovereign made in 1989. Mm -hmm. And we call it the Tudor, because if you look, actually on the front there, it's the Tudor Rose. Mm -hmm. And that is, out of all the kind of modern series of gold-proof coins, this is the rarest date. This is the one the collectors want. They're a very, very nice lot. There are a lot that I would like to try and buy from you. Okay. So really, what we'll do we do to get down to the point, really, about some money on the table. What do you ladies think? Yes, please. Hi. What colour do you like? I like um, I like it when it's got a 50 on it. You like the reds? Yeah, the I reds. really do. It's your lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I've got in my back. Look, it comes. Look, the reds. <laughs> Let's start doing a better count. OK. Might take a little bit of time, but I'm sure that won't bother you. OK, no. 50, 100. 150, 200. 250, 300. 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900, 150, 1000. Just need a break there. Get my breath there. <laughs> oh, oh getting a hot flush. We're not. <laughs> There's an, oh, thank you, David. Oh, I need it. OK. Get some more, Dad. <laughs> oh, that's helped me a lot. That's good. OK, so we've got a 1,000 on the table there. OK. Shall we start again? Yes, please. 10.50, 11. 11.50, 12. 12.50, 13. 13.50, 14. 14.50, 15. 1550, 16, 1650, 17, 1750, 18, 1850, 19, 1950, 2000. Okay. I'm not going to stop. Break. A little break. I'm <laughs> going to have a little break just need to get my composure. A little bit more on there. Yeah. It's coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Right, where could I put the money? I'll put it here if you like. You won't run away with it. Okay. <laughs> 2050. 2100. 
2350, 24. 2450. I'm trying to stand up. <laughs> two and a half thousand pounds. Talk to me, ladies. I You've need got some a input. You need to take out oh. another bike. Well, I've come in here because I can give some input. And what I can say is, first of all, it's a pleasure, you know, to see a dealer on this show that doesn't mess about. Yeah. Wants to buy nice goods, wants to pay a fair price. Now, we estimated these items very very carefully. We have a jewellery expert on board and she reckons that they are worth in total about £3,000 to sell, mm -hmm. for a dealer to sell them. Now any dealer is going to, going to want to make a profit. I wouldn't have any hesitation in saying, thanks Mark, I'll take that money home with me. There you are ladies, great bit of advice there. Okay. It is a really good bit of advice. Um, I just wonder whether it just seems unfair that these aren't matched up a little bit the same. <laughs> we, could move them across. No, it, we, we could add some more. <laughs> do you know what I'm going to do yeah. for you? I've listened to what David said and I've listened, you know, yes. it must be heartbreaking for yes, you. And I, yeah. and I, I really yes. understand that. Yeah. Yes. So there's 25 on the table yeah. now. Yeah. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a quick look in here as a gesture mm -hmm. from me to you. For you to go and buy something for yourself. There's another 50 there, and there's another 50 there. There's 2,600 pounds there. That's my offer, ladies. I think Thank it's a you. fair offer, but I want you to be happy. That's very important to me. Thank you very much. Yes. And we have a deal. Yeah, we have a deal. Thank you very much indeed. Thank it's you. been a pleasure Thank seeing you, you and having a deal. And Thank you, you very Thank much. Thank you so much. You're That's welcome. really great. Thank you. Thank you. That's really kind. <laughs> What a great way to end the day here in Bristol. Our sellers have walked away with nearly £5,000 today. Lawrence came with a sugar casket, which he bought in a charity shop. And I have to ask you a crucial question. How much did you pay for it? Uh, £100. But Corey couldn't offer enough to keep him from auction. I would have loved to have bought that casket. It's so pretty, so me, so lovely. Lucky for Lawrence, there was a buyer for it in the sale room making him a very sweet profit indeed. As for our dealers, they've offered up over £3,000 of their own cash. But have they been getting a good return? Simon sat down with Carol and her gold jewellery. He offered her a neat £220. I'd like to accept that offer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in today. Simon sold the jewellery on to a variety of different buyers, making him a nice little turnover. Mark paid Gilbert well over the odds for his sword. It's something that I like. It's got something about it. But after all that confidence, he's yet to find a buyer for it. He paid a fair whack for the music box. I am prepared to make it the 500. Yes, I would accept that. Thank you very much indeed. But luckily for him, sold it on to an American dealer just a few weeks later. That's lovely. That's music to my ears. And as the day drew to a close, Mark sat down with Nora and Dolores. After a gruelling battle, everybody went away happy. There's £2,600 there. That's my offer, ladies. I think Thank it's a you. fair offer, but I want you to be happy. That's very important to me. Thank you very much, yes. And we have a deal? Yeah, we have a deal. And Mark's good fortune continued after he sold the sovereigns on for £2,800. Out of all the kind of modern series of gold-proof coins, this is the rarest day. This is the one the collectors want. Well done, Mark. <laughs> We've had a great day. It's been lots of action, lots of buying and selling, and that's the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for... See you. <laughs>